Welcome to the Run True Diaries podcast. This is where we talk about managing your time in ways that helps you accomplish your running goals. Lace up to get your race up. Let's get moving. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody out there running on native land? And welcome to the Run True Diaries podcast. I am your host, Luis, a.k.a. Chico, and this is episode number five. Thank you for spending some of your precious time listening to the show. I appreciate it. I'm definitely not going to waste it. Lace up to get your race up and let's get moving. We're at the starting line with this episode's guest, and she lifts, skis, rappels, skydives, hikes, runs, and she created a place where the Native American community can share their adventures, experiences, places, and stories called Adventurous Natives. She is the definition of red rocks and blue skies and is easily one of the faces of the canyon. Angel Taddyton, welcome to the Run Shoe Diaries podcast. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Well, it's definitely a pleasure to have you on the Run True Diaries podcast, and we are officially in podcast mode. So go ahead and give us your introduction. Okay. I'm Angel Taddyton Yatze. I am Navajo. Sheik Uzzlana Nishla, Mai Dishkizni Bashishin, Twidijini Ada Shate, Kiaani Ada Shinella. Um, I am from Arizona. I'm a mom of three boys. I'm married and I am pretty nervous. So <laughs> just uh, need to calm down a little bit. No, I, def- but- I definitely understand. And trust me, mm. it, I, this is what number five for me. And so I still get nervous as well. But let's uh, shake those nerves and let's give your home state a shout out. OK, yeah, I'm from Arizona. All right. And tell us something amazing or interesting about the state. Um, Arizona is where the Grand Canyon is, and that's an amazing place to be. I'm going to name a place and you Mm -hmm. tell me the significance of this place. Okay. Marble Canyon, Arizona. Oh, so I grew up in a place called Bitter Springs, the tiny community, and Marble Canyon is just right there. That's that's my little bit of res I grew up in. Nice. Born and raised there. I was born and raised in tu- or I was born in Tuba, raised there. Split that between Paige. So yeah. Okay. Do you have any siblings? And if so, where do you fit in? I do. Uh, there's seven of us total. Oh wow. Yeah, I am third from last. Okay. Was there? Any- I- oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I feel like I'm the middle though. Because yeah. I'm kind of everybody's go-to. Nice. So you said you were married and have children. How long have you been married? We have been married for 16 years. Oh, wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so we have three kids. We have a 15-year-old, a 10-year-old, and a 3-year-old. Wow, you definitely have your hands full. Do you, uh, your children, do they uh, have any extracurricular activities, sports or anything? Yeah. So the boys have always done some type of activity. Um, it's kind of our our family thing that, you know, you'd be engaged in something along with your academics. And our two older ones have always done like football and baseball throughout their childhood. And right now our oldest is in cross country. Nice. He just started this week. And then our 10-year-old just started his youth football league. That's awesome. And you said uh, academics. And, you know, and this is what I have two daughters. And what I tell them is academics comes first, you know. So and it definitely looks like you're doing the same thing. Your significant other's work schedule, is that something you have to work in with your training and everything? Yeah, I really, especially with three boys, like we – we have to like check in daily. Like, can you do this while I do this? Can you know, like really work with each other on that? Cause he also, my husband's name's Darren. We met in high school and Paige. And so we've been together for quite some time. Hi Darren. (laughs) But yeah, so, and he's also, um, you know, an athlete himself, you know, he trying to get um, in shape for stuff for adventures. And so he also has those goals as, same as mine, you know, so we definitely try to work that out. That That is awesome. And I'm probably going to uh, next be asking Darren to come on the show. So, <laughs> so um, occupation, uh, what do you do? 
I am a social worker. Right now, I'm a social worker at a place that helps children that have been in the foster system too long find adoptive okay. placements. That's awesome. If I'm looking at these, right, it looks like you got your uh, bachelor's at Utah State and master's at ASU. I did. Being in Utah State, is that your first time being away from home or how did all this play into it? Oh, yeah, that was definitely my first time away from home, Arizona, the desert. I had such a hard time. It was I, I remember like even my husband when we were younger, he was just like, isn't it so awesome to be like on our own, like free? And I'm just like, no, I'm so homesick. Yeah. I want to go home. Like I feel almost claustrophobic by the mountains not giving me a like a clear horizon, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was so different and I just was so homesick. Did you get to visit home often? Um, so I went to Utah State, it's in Logan, and yeah. it's about eight hour drive from Page. Okay. And so it was long, long ways. And I was a poor college student, so it wasn't like I got to go back very often. But I, I understand. I, I've oh, been yeah. there. I've been there. And <laughs> you know, and every time, even now, you know, every time I go home, when you see that familiar landscape, it's just I don't, I can't even explain it. It's just like a, a breath of fresh air. Like you can relax. So welcome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's almost like a grandma with open arms saying, yes. welcome back. <laughs> you know, like just yes. really like, finally I'm where I am from. And this is like my home. And yes. it's, it's funny too. Cause on the way back from Logan, you start to get red rocks around like St. George, like Zion area, you know? Yes. So I already start to feel that before I even get across That's the border. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm like already like, I'm so close. I'm almost there. I'm so close. All right. So we're going to dive into these adventurers. Mm -hmm. uh, so let, let's start off with your Instagram handle. Let us know what it is so we can follow you. Um, my personal Instagram is AA Taddyton. And that's just my personal one. The one I just do whatever me and my family are up to. Um, but I also have another Instagram that I started about two years ago, and it's called um, Adventurous Natives. Nice. We'll get to Adventurous Natives. Right now, we're going to talk to A.A. Uh, a. Taddyton. So <laughs> listeners, here's a warning for you. One look through her Instagram, and you're going to be researching these areas and booking flights. There's a lot of adventure and beautiful pics here. You've been warned. <laughs> we're moving on. So I want to start off with this question right here. If you were a car in the Disney movie Cars, which vehicle <laughs> would you be and why? I'm a Ford Sport Bronco. For nice. sure. <laughs> I love it. So I, I saw your new Bronco and everything, and it has mm -hmm. a goat mode. Yeah. So it, tell me, what is that? It, it's an acronym for goes over any terrain. Oh, Okay. That's what it means. The Ford, that's what the acronym means for Ford. But the funny thing is, yeah. my my first clan is okay. was Athlana, and that means mini goat. Okay. I'm oh. from the mini goat clan. Okay. I mean, how perfect is that? Mini so, goat clan with a goat mode, like yeah. it was meant to be. It, so you you made a a small uh, Instagram reel and it says that and like now I can make the connection. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. Like even my, my family now just like cracks up whenever like we go like <laughs> off roading and they're like, was this one of mode? That's awesome. And, it, and it's now one of our hashtags for our family. So it's funny. <laughs> I, I love it. So how did you become such an adventurer? Um, so I, I've always, I keep getting asked this question, you know, and I keep yeah. thinking like, I really didn't like delve into it until like my husband and I were like older, but really it feels like it originates just being a kid on the reservation, you know, okay. just yeah. being, just being that kid that like all you have is the outdoors. So what yeah. could we do? What could we get into? What could we explore? And I feel like that's where it, it starts, you know, um, especially yeah. for me and my husband. You know, I, I can relate to that. Uh, I grew up in the country and yeah, I mean, you just have 
whatever's outside and have some horses yeah. and, you know, the land. And uh, I, I'm grateful for that experience because there's so many things that I did in my youth that, I mean, you just can't do today, you know? So your Instagram shows a wide variety of awesomeness. And so let's begin with lifting. How did you get into it and how long ago? Um, so I started lifting in about 2014, maybe 15. Okay. Um, so that all happened because um, my husband and I are really into sports. Like we've always been an athlete or we've always been involved in some type of sport throughout our lives, even as parents and adults. Yeah. Um, and he had some friends that was that were uh, attending a CrossFit gym. Okay. And he was like, we should try that. And I was just thinking like weightlifting, like, isn't that like a man thing? I was like thinking <laughs> that's yeah. like, that's like bro sesh stuff. Like I, <laughs> I didn't think so, but he was just like, just try it. Yeah. And he got me a discount mother's day discount and I went to it and awesome. I loved it. It was insane. So do you take classes? Do you have a coach or you just go in and do your own thing? Um, so I have a membership right now at uh, CrossFit Obsession down here in Gilbert. Okay. And I just go um, once a day to like an hour class. And they okay. have coaches there for that class. But I yeah. don't have like a personal coach because you can also do that on yeah. top of just going to jump in a class, you know? Right. You recently posted a PR. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I just recently back squatted a 305. Woo! And <laughs> that's an all time best. And Heck. it, no, the thing that is, um, I most celebrate, even though it is a PR and it's like crazy huge, was how efficient and easy it was for me. I, it just made me feel like, Oh my gosh, I think I could do more yeah. than 305, you know? So yeah. it's do have, crazy. Do you have goals to do it? Do more than uh, that? I'm kind of one of those. Uh, I just see kind of where the road takes me, you know? Okay. There, is, there isn't there is ever any like written down, I'm going to reach like 315 by this yeah. day. I'm yeah. just more of like, because this 305 PR was just like me attending a regular weightlifting class that bunch nice. of us so, so it wasn't ever like i was building to a back squat a higher max it That's wasn't awesome. yeah, like, yeah it was just all of a sudden the one day they're like let's do our prs for back squat and it's like we haven't done that for like a while and <laughs> i pr you know so well that's awesome congratulations thank you do you cross train for running and if so which exercises does your running benefit from so I only, I actually feel like I do the opposite. Okay. Um, running is my cross train for everything else I'm doing. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm kind of, um, I'm sure uh, if you kind of look back at my like running posts, I kind of have like this uh, conflict of being an actual runner. You know, I just feel like I'm not, um, running is not all I do. Right. And so I feel like, I lift more than I run. I CrossFit more than I run. I adventure more than I run. So it's almost like running is my cross train. Um, okay. But the exercises that I feel like that help me with yeah. my running that I'm doing just regularly are like any like cardio stuff, like burpees. I hate so much. <laughs> but yes, welcome that, to the club. Yeah, but that just like, you know, gets you going and keeps you um, pretty in shape and like rowing or biking. Yeah, um, I feel like those are so much like running because I would, of course, rather just pick up a barbell and do like a heavy set and be like done, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to talk about how you got in, got into running, but you kind of answered that question already by saying that that is your cross training for other things you do. Are there any specific runners or groups that motivate and inspire you to run? Oh, yeah. So my main inspiration is my family. Okay. I actually grew up in a family that runs. Oh, wow. Tell um, me about it. Yeah. So 
all three of my brothers all ran cross country. Um, my sister and my brother, they run ultras. Nice. And I'm kind of the odd guy out. Like I just was like, I tried cross country in middle school. Yeah. Was it middle school? Yeah, middle school. And I was like, oh, this is so much work. I'd rather. And of course, I, I played volleyball instead. You know, I was, yeah. I was like, that's that's kind of easier. <laughs> I'm more of a I'm more of a team sport too kind of person. I love that. Um, so I kind of went a different route, but my family and my dad actually ran too. And oh, so wow. I feel like like whenever I think of not running, I just feel like I want to continue it because it gives me that connection to him. Yeah. And also it it's kind of in my family too. So yeah. They're my main motivation. That's awesome. What is the longest distance that you have completed? Just this year, I did my longest of 20 miles. All right. 33K? Yes. Was that at the uh, Moab's Red Hot? Yes, it was. So the Moab's Red Hot is a run that is hosted by Mad Moose Events and held <laughs> northwest of Moab, Utah right near the Arches National Park, right? Yep. That is awesome. I, I saw the Instagram post and everything. All the pics and videos that you posted about this run, they look amazing. And it's definitely a run that I want to participate in someday. But let's talk about your experience on that. Give us the details. Yeah, so I have swore to my family and friends that I would never run anything more than a half marathon. Like I was like up and down like, never will I ever run anything more than that. Just cause yeah. I just felt like ma half marathons were perfect. They were long enough to test you like your fitness and your, yeah. your mental strength, but short enough to be like, I can live to survive another day, you know? So <laughs> yeah. I, they were, it was just a perfect <laughs> amount of miles, uh, especially when you hit like that eight mile mark and you're like, Oh shoot, I ran the first part too fast, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I promised myself I would not do that, but I have a, a friend and uh -huh. she's really tenacious. Her name's Kendall. And she was like, let's do it. Like she is one of those friends that you need to help you go yeah. to another level. You didn't think you could do. Cause I didn't think I could do 20 miles. You know, I was just yeah. like, it will take me 10 hours is what I'm thinking <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> yeah. And she was just like, no, no. And then when I was training too, she was just like, how's training? And I'm like, I'm not doing good. I'm going to die. And yeah, I'll say like, I was running and I had to walk. And she was like, no, this is different. Walking's okay. You know, yeah. like she just made me feel comfortable. Like, right. And so you, mm -hmm. you, meant, you mentioned training. Uh, what was your training leading up to the race? Oh, okay. So I am not good at training. So I did have like a, like a beginner's 20 mile or computer printout training, you know, okay. like just something like Google it really quick. And it's like, what yeah. can I do? And it was like, I don't know, not really fit my schedule. I, uh -oh. I feel like um, Monday through Friday, I am so busy. Oh yes. Full-time work, kids, dinner, you know, like everything's just so packed in Monday through Friday that the most I could probably do um, every day is like three miles. Yeah. And so the weekends were the time where I would have to like kind of step it up. But I, I live, um, I have to travel to like my nearest area. And so that has to like happen perfectly. Yeah. Like it, it's just really hard. So I didn't run more than like 10 miles for a long run. Oh, and I wow. only did a 10 mile run like twice. But throughout this whole time, I'm still um, crossfitting, still weightlifting. So it's not that I'm not I'm like right. sitting on the couch, like not doing no training. Right. I'm just uh, cherry picking kind of thing, yeah. you know, t t taking your own approach. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> um, so what, what was the yeah. terrain like on that run? It was so crazy. So I didn't do my research. I okay. definitely was like. I'm going with my friend to run a red hot on Valentine's day, you know, and it's a yeah. Valentine's weekend is all I'm thinking. Um, I did not know the elevation gain was like 4,000 feet. I oh, can't remember. <laughs> it was, it was a lot. 
<laughs> so that is like, crazy. Yeah. So I was like, what did I get myself into? Was the course a loop or was it an out and back? It was a little bit of both. So we went out, okay. looped, and then came back on the same road. Oh, okay. So did you, uh, I'm sure they had aid stations. Did you cross one of them multiple times? Yeah. One, one aid station we did okay. twice. Yeah. Did you stop at the aid stations and what was your favorite product at those aid stations? I always stop. I've learned like you, you might think you can keep going and it's yep. like, really, really, who are you racing? You're racing yourself. So you oh, need to yes. calm down, you know? Thank you. <laughs> Somebody said it finally. <laughs> and I always stop because I just, you just never know, especially with like, I, I hike and backpack a lot too. Yeah. And that's, that's walking, but under still like you're under some stress with either like the weight on you or the miles ahead of you. Yeah. And I've learned just from that too, like you have to stop, even though, you know, you can walk forever. Yeah. It's like, how healthy do you want to be walking? You know, yeah. how much strength are you going to have if you, you know, take this break and take this snack and take this drink, you know, like, yeah it could only benefit you to keep going further. So I always stop. And my favorite thing is always the electrolytes because I am definitely prone to cramps, prone okay. to like the headaches, you know? So yeah. always electrolytes and potato chips. Was there any specific uh, electrolytes you're taking or was it just whatever they had at the aid station? Just whatever they had. Um, okay. I know that when I go hiking, I usually just take that little bottle of noon, those tablets. Oh, yeah. Noon tablets. Yeah. That way you can just throw it in, you know, your bottle. One of my favorite things to eat uh, a lot of at uh, aid stations are gummy bears. Oh, and yeah. So, so I do the chipmunk thing where you like stuff your <laughs> cheeks. And so I have these two cheeks full of gummy bears and I just continue my run and just slowly eat them and everything. Yeah. Hopefully I don't choke one day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the you said that the race uh was held in February. How mm -hmm. was the weather? It rained on us the whole oh, wow. time. So okay, so yeah. <laughs> not only did I not know that I was climbing a mountain. Yeah. I it was raining on us. But then I just thought to myself like Actually, that's probably good for me because I usually get like super hot, you know, like, yeah, and I just I can't um, cool down fast yeah. enough. So I was like, pretty grateful for that. It was kind of nice. Um, I was just glad it didn't like really, really rain on us. It was kind of like a drizzle the entire time. Did you have any rain gear by chance? I did. Very well prepared. <laughs> yeah. So I had a I had a run in. February as well. And it was here in Texas. Mm -hmm. And we don't ever get snow. Suddenly, in the middle of the night, we get this cold snap. And it starts snowing on us. And in the middle of nowhere, I literally I was just like, I, I, I've never been so cold in my life. Oh, no. So like I had my wife come pick me up and I had to the next we went to the hotel the next morning, my wife had to pick me back up and we started there again. So I had to wow. ask about the weather because I can relate to that. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a winter month. Oh, yeah, definitely surprised. So what is your favorite shoe to run in? So I have tried probably everything. Okay. Because um, like I explained, um, I had run half marathons before. Yeah. And so that was my family. Like, <laughs> they were like, what we should do is make an annual half marathon in Salt Lake. Um, oh, nice. And so we ran probably eight half marathons in Salt Lake together as a family. Um, so I've tried like the Asics, the yeah. Pony, like everything for road. My favorite road shoe is Brooks, the glycerin from Brooks. Okay. Um, okay. But trail running is quite different. Yeah. So I I tried the Brooks trail runner and it, it did not feel like my Brooks road runner, you know? So I'm just <laughs> yeah. like how it should translate, right? Like yeah. the same company, like <laughs> my foot didn't change, you know? Yeah. So I think I'm still navigating like the trail runner shoe world. Um, okay. But 
I did run that Moab or the Red Hot in ultras. Yeah. The Lone Peak. Okay. Yeah. Um, it it did pretty good. I That's good. I was worried about it because everybody was like, it's zero drop or something. And I'm like, what? I, what's that? I'm like, it feels like a normal <laughs> shoe. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Are you still running in uh, ultras? For trail, yeah. Okay. But just when I do my weekday run on the road thing, I yeah. still wear my Brooks. Yeah. That's awesome. You mentioned this a little bit earlier, and I'm going to revert back to it. But in mm -hmm. one of your Instagram posts for the, uh, the start of the uh, red hot mm. you said while waiting for my wave i was looking around and started to feel like i didn't belong i'm not an endurance athlete what am i doing here and then i realized the amazing people that curated this place for runners like me to be here i am a runner this is a <laughs> powerful statement and by the way you chronicled this in your instagram feed for this event delivered a powerful positivity punch for everyone Tell us about all of the encouragement that you received out there from your family, other runners, and even the views. Oh, wow. Yeah, that definitely got a lot of comments when I was just explaining that because we all feel that, you know, and I feel like a lot yeah. of people that follow me are just everyday people. Like we're not like paid to run ultras, you know, so we definitely right. don't look like them. But we're also people that we do want that too. And we want to experience what we experience. And so everyone definitely gave like, I feel the exact same way. And um, I did say that I was so glad that people like um, Native Woman Running was out there. My sister, yeah. yeah, my sister Candy, she runs regardless of what anyone, you know, yeah, how anyone perceives anything like she, she runs for herself, not for how it looks, you know? Right. And I feel like that just, when I think of them, it makes me feel at home. You know, I do yeah. belong here. I do have a space for this. And I mean, it would be nice to, you know, show up and not have to feel that way. But we also do have a little bit of space where people actually do create that for us. Those little moments of, no, 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 you're not alone. Yeah. You're good to go. We can do this. And the funny thing is um, I posted that and I was just really thanking the people yeah. that create that space. And some people would thank me for creating that place. So it was like almost like full circle, you know, yeah. it was just like I didn't even think of it that way, you know? So I yeah. feel like I get to be a part of what I need to. Right. Know? Also during this event, you stated that you had to call upon some previous experiences in this uh, example, uh, the rim to rim that you did. How did those previous experiences motivate you and get you through this event? Oh, yeah, I have done some backpacking trips where I probably should be dead. <laughs> you know, like it's, <laughs> I did some, some pretty sketchy stuff um, yeah. adventure wise. Yeah. Um, and so when I when I'm like running and it's like, why am I doing this? Like, ugh, why would you purposely do this to yourself? I always just kind of can remind myself, like, you've been in a worse situation and you've gotten out of it. You've actually gotten more than out of it. You crushed it, you know? Yeah. And so I like with Rim to Rim, we had such high hopes to like make some good time on that, but it was so hot yeah. that we had to like hide in the shade. Like, <laughs> oh, man. yeah. And we had to, we're like, dude, we have to wait for night to come to even oh, continue man. our hike. Yeah. And by the time I got out, we were just depleted, you know? Yeah. And, and so I just, when I was running up the hills, when I thought of rim to rim and I'm like, this is nothing. Rim yeah. to rim took my soul. This isn't even your soul. This is like your hand. Maybe let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I was on rim to rim one time, uh, 2000, maybe 13, maybe even 12. But, um, yeah, I, I cramped up pretty good. And at the time, I didn't really know about electrolytes and, you know, balance oh, yeah. and all this stuff like that. So I'm just kind of like, yeah, I got it. Wore a hat that didn't vent very well. And yeah, it, that trail took it to me. What I think it was, is it Bright Angel? Yep. Yeah, that's the one that I need to go back and redeem myself on one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So 
When you cross that finish line, can you explain that amazing feeling that you had? Um, I actually started to feel that before because, okay. uh, so of course, 20 miles is like the longest I've ever ran. Yeah. And I did get to a dark place where it was like, why? I, I told you half marathons are the furthest we'll ever go. Yeah. But I got back to that checkpoint where, you know, it, you have to come back to it and then you hit the last five miles. Yeah. And when I got back to it, I was just like, holy crap. I only have five miles to go, you know? And I was just like, yeah. what the one thing too, that um, makes me feel like I've accomplished so much is my body, like how it feels. Right. Because I've run like half marathons where I just ran too fast, had no electrolytes and I'm like yeah. cramping up and it's like the worst feeling in the world. And you're just, you know, you yeah. kind of put yourself in that situation. And right. so that was one of my goals when I did that 20 miler was a force to complete it. Second, yeah. your body is feeling good. You know, Heck like yeah. that's, that was my goal was my, my body will not shut down. I will be able to hike after this, you know, yeah. like at uh, Paige where I grew up, there's, there's Lake Powell half marathon there from vacation okay. races. Oh yes. and, yeah. And so it's funny because they have this thing called trifecta where you run that race. And if you hit horseshoe bend, Antelope Canyon and the lake, if you hit those things after your race, you get a free entry. Oh. And, and I could never do it because I would like blaze and then like put myself out and I couldn't hike anything, you know, it was like, yeah. you like run to injury. And then you're like, I just went to visit Moab, this most beautiful place on earth. <laughs> and I can't even see it because I'm like laid out, you know? Yeah. And so that was one of my things is I'm going to be able to train enough, take care of my body enough that. I can do more than just what I'm there for. Anyway, so that was one of my goals going into it. And so yeah. when I got to that 15 mile checkpoint, I was just like, no way. And I don't have a cramp. Yeah. How, how do I not have a cramp? I always have a cramp, <laughs> you know? And I was just like, how do I not have a headache? I don't yeah. have a headache. I was just so proud of my body. And I was just like, holy crap, like it's amazing. And so even though I still had five miles, you know, yeah. like that high from getting there with like a good body, yeah. like just, I just rode that until you, you get up over this ledge and then you go along this cliff to the, but you, when you hit the top of the cliff, you can see the finish, the, finish. the banner. Yeah. Wow. So you get up there and I just got like chills and I was just <laughs> like, dude, it's right there. It's, yeah. Oh my gosh. And so I, I booked it down that hill, you know, and it's like, yes, but I had to kind of rein myself in. You like, remember yeah. you, your body's feeling good. Let's not like crush it right now. when you're like two miles yeah. from the finish. Yeah. And so I, you know, I calmed down, but I was just seriously so elated that like I completed 20 miles and Heck my yes. body feel good. And I told myself I wouldn't, but why, like, how cool is that to like prove your own self wrong? You right? know, it's man, so cool. That That's amazing. I, I love that feeling. And man, every time I finish a race, I have that feeling. And that's one of the reasons that I keep returning. Yeah. It's so cool. All right. So you're currently leveling up your game as a runner. Did that seed grow from your love of hiking? Yeah, well, definitely because all the adventures, you know, okay. like there's, yeah. there's hiking, there's backpacking, there's canyoneering, but that will be so much easier. Like <laughs> all those, all those miles of hiking, all yeah. those miles of backpacking, canyoneering is so much easier when your body is used to such an, like an endurance, you know? Yeah. And so running has always been kind of like this foundation. Okay. Cause if I want to do a, you know, a big trip, yeah. if I'm running, it's so much easier, you know, cause your body's ready for that. Your body's ready to, you know, take yeah. on such a long and arduous kind of trip. And so right. Ru running just has to be part of it because that's what makes you so um, efficient. Right. 
So you're the creator of Adventurous Natives. Can you tell us about that, what it is, and how did it begin? Yeah, so Adventurous Natives is just an Instagram um, page where I share um, everyone's adventures. Um, I created it because I am an adventurous native, and I feel like um, I would post on my own personal um, Instagram about all my adventures, and I would get a lot of messages, especially on my Facebook, too. Yeah. Where is this? What did you do? Where'd you go? Invite me. And I would invite yeah. people. And so I, I kind of started like this little kind of adventure group um, with just friends. And yeah. I wanted to showcase that because not only did they adventure with me, they broke off and did their own adventures with their own friends. And it just started to bloom, you know? And so I wanted a place to showcase everyone's adventures because I felt like it was kind of weird to share it on my own because yeah. that's like my personal account. And it's like, oh, well, here's my friend Shy doing this. You know, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I had to create a space where I can do that. And now it's kind of fun because people I don't know, I haven't adventured with, um, yeah. tag it and hashtag it. And it's like, wow, let's share their adventure. That's and awesome. Yeah, and still I get the messages like, where is this? How can I get here? And it's like, perfect. Right. Because we all should have that ability to do that and go places where others have been. On your Instagram, you have a link and uh, it goes to the Hike United project. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so Hike United is just um, a big kind of program that, um, I'm an ambassador for women who hike. Okay. Um, and they're part of this big, um, program trying to get everybody out to hike and it's to hike United. And it's just to get everybody out in the month of August, um, okay. just to get outside and, uh, either in a group or alone and it's just represent each other out there. Awesome. Hey, so you already hit on this, but you're an ambassador for a few different organizations, uh, Women Who Hike and Hello Ranger. Can you tell mm -hmm. us about these organizations? How did you get involved and what they're all about? Yeah, so I've been an ambassador for Women Who Hike the longest, and that's just because I was always, already hiking. And um, I hiked the most with my husband. Um, okay. Even in high school, we all hiked as a, a big group. Yeah. Um, but... I decided I wanted to hike with women. <laughs> I wanted <laughs> to find some some lady friends. And so I joined uh, Women Who Hike. And on there, you can plan your own hikes, even if you're just a member and not an ambassador. Yeah. And so I decided to plan my own hike. And I, I've kind of done that already with my own Facebook friends. Yeah. So it wasn't anything new or different. And the hike I planned was in Page, which is like Red Rocks blue sky, like Antelope Canyon esque, you know? And so yeah. when I planned that hike, I got crazy feedback about, I want to hike there, you know? Yeah. And it was on Navajo land too. And so I did get a lot of people interested in that. And that caught the attention of the founder of women who hike. Okay. Yeah. Because it was such a big turnout and she was just yeah. like, this is great. And I did it. And then after that, she was like, would you like to be an ambassador? Because, you know, oh, I was nice. able to get a big group together successfully and just like tell them how like I like where we right. are, my land and share it. And so she um, had me come on as an ambassador just to share my so land, my culture through hiking. So do you routinely do hikes with that now? I we used to so since COVID we totally oh, stopped. Right. Um, we yeah. kind of like Hike United is kind of our first hikes back into it. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully this month I'll be able to do one. I'm not sure yet though with my schedule, so I'm trying to figure that out. But it feels like we're almost ready to go back to start starting to plan um, some hiking. But before that, I did. It was like I planned three hikes a year. Oh wow. Yeah. So women who hike, are there hosts everywhere, like in regional areas that host other hikes and trails? Yeah. So there we go by state. And so okay. each state has an ambassador. I'm not sure right now how many are in each one or anything like that, but 
in Arizona, there's, I think, three of us. Okay. So, yeah. And how can other women join your team? Um, yeah. So we have a Facebook page and okay. it's um, Women Who Hike Arizona. And you can join that. And that one, you can either join people on hikes. You can join the ambassadors on hikes. And that's just where you get a bunch of information too about hiking and gear. If there are no ambassadors in a, I guess, given, given area, uh, can one be started? Can a female reach out and say, hey, I want to do this here? Yes, yes. And a big one, too, is for New Mexico. So we totally need ambassadors for New Mexico if you're a New Mexico lady that likes to hike. <laughs> All right. So there you go, ladies. For more information on women who hike, I'm going to put the links in the description. So do you have a description on Hello Ranger? Um, so Hello Ranger is more of just uh, like a blog spot that I have. Okay. And I'm, um, they are an organization that just like do information and articles on exploring national parks. Okay. Um, yeah. And so a lot of their ambassadors are just all different types of outdoor people, like van life people or, you know, just, yeah, all sorts of people. It's so great. Um, and I'm just um, kind of because I do love national parks. I do love to visit those areas. And so I try to do um, some articles on just some of my trips. Yeah. Um, but I'm not the best at writing. So I feel like it's always like, eh, maybe yeah. I'll write something. Maybe I won't. Yeah. But yeah, but just trying to promote like, Native Americans hitting yeah, the outdoors and like just representing out there, you know? Right. So do you have a favorite trail, a favorite park? Um, I think my favorite park is Grand Canyon. Okay. Um, it actually, it's a pretty big tie between Grand Canyon and Zion National Park. Okay. Yeah. And I would say my favorite trail would probably be Bright Angel. Nice. It's a, yeah, it's a trail in Zion and it's kind of short. And so it's like, it's straight up and short. So it's like short and sweet, but also pretty grueling. Yeah. Pretty tough. Yeah. So you've been highlighted in one of the Tiva Faces of the Canyon, uh, a short mm. film. Can you tell us what this is about and how this venture came through? Yeah. So Faces of the Canyon, that's the year that the Grand Canyon had a birthday or not Grand Canyon, but the National Park yeah. had its 100th birthday. And so they decided, Teva decided to do um, a showcase on people that enjoy the park. And so I was one of the faces that they interviewed about it. So for those listening, the link for Angel's video is going to be in the description. And for those watching on YouTube, the link is going to be in the card above. Be sure to watch, like, share, and enjoy. So what other adventure, adventures or events do you have coming up? Um, so I have a pretty crazy adventure coming up in right. uh, Wyoming. I'm not ready for it. Okay. Um, but I have, me and my husband grew up in Page, and there's he has a childhood friend that is a very um, good rock climber. Yeah. And really skilled in the mountains, you know? And so he decided to take us um, on a mountain trip. So oh, wow. I won't say much about it only because I don't know if I'm going to survive, but that's coming up. And okay. I also have um, Ragnar in November. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Arizona, it's Ragnar Trail, Arizona. It's down here in the valley, in the central area of Arizona. I have that, and that's a team event. That one's always so fun. Yeah. And, and then I have the Dead Horse Ultra, which will be my newest, longest run of my life. Okay. And it's a, what, 50K? 50K. Let me double check that. I was, because I don't know the Ks, you know? It's like, yeah, with that's uh, 30, yes. 32 miles? Yeah, 31 yeah. point something. That's yes. my next one in November. Well, definitely keep us in the loop with that one and might have to have you come back on the show and tell us all about your adventure on that one. Yeah. And that one's actually really awesome too, because I'm part of an ultra team. Like how crazy is that to say that? Um, because yeah. I give them a shout my, out. So mountain ultra team is what I'm part of. Yeah. Mountain ultra. 
Yes. So I get to be a part of a team on that one. So well, t- t- tell us how this uh, venture with Mountain Ultra came about. Yeah. So he, um, Bryce, he um, saw my post about my red hot. Yeah. And he said that really um, spoke to him in the sense that it's kind of how a lot of us feel. You know, yeah. we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. how it's going to go until it goes and it goes well. And you're like, wow, I think I can do this. And I think I can do more, you yeah. know? And so he invited me to be part of the ultra team um, to tackle my next biggest um, distance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Where is the dead horse uh, located? That's in Moab <laughs> that's too. A, that's a, that's a funny <laughs> statement. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Where, what kind of name where is, is that? the dead horse <laughs> ultra going to be held? <laughs> yeah, but that one's a Moab too. And that so I feel like, yeah, I feel like I survived the red hot in Moab. So I might be able to survive this one. I think you got it. And when is this going to be? In November. Ooh, I think it's, it's the last weekend in November. It's coming up. Hopefully it doesn't rain again. So since we're back on running, is there something that you do as a runner that other runners may find weird? I think that I weight lift. I think that's weird to a lot of runners. I feel like. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, uh, uh, I wouldn't say foreign, but they don't necessarily lift as heavy as you do. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was like telling, um, some of the people I weight lift with that I'm running, um, the 20 miler when I was doing that and they're like, what? yeah you're gonna survive that and then flip it you know to like the runners and i'm i'm like i was thinking about a weightlifting competition and they're like are you supposed to be training like it was almost like you can't mesh the two but i'm i'm meshing the two and it's possible (laughs) what races are on your bucket list um i have two races on my bucket list so one is the antelope canyon ultra by vacation races and that's in my hometown of page um i've done the half marathon through them um, during all the races but they have a like a 30 miler a 50 miler and a 100 miler and i would like to try um maybe their 50 miler one day if i ever get that ambitious and the reason why i would love to is because the course goes through um antelope canyon um, it goes through just like the most beautiful parts of Paige. And so I, and I feel like it's hometown too. It's almost yeah. like, you know, your home, uh, hometown feel kind of thing. So I yeah. feel like your stomping maybe, grounds. Yeah. So I think that would be awesome. And the other one that I really would like to try if I, you know, really did, um, take on like the ultra race stuff would be the Canyon de 55 K and that's on the Navajo nation and it's run. Okay. It's Navajo owned and run, and it's actually so popular that um, one year it sold out in like seven minutes, and you have to really? go by wa- yeah, and you have to go by lottery. Oh man, how how many uh, miles are is that run? Uh, it's a fifty five k, so I okay. don't know thirty something. Okay, right. Um, hey, going back to the uh, Antelope Canyon. Uh, Mm -hmm. that's you said that's uh put on by by vacation races the uh glacier half yeah montana that is right outside of the blackfeet reservation uh well actually on the blackfeet reservation but so we the blackfeet people we get uh discounts for that is that the does that go for uh the antelope canyon does that go for y'all I don't know if it still does, but when I did the half marathon, yeah. it was free to me. So, oh, yeah. nice. So you said you've been running for, I guess, quite some time as you do family runs and everything. So uh, last last run question before we move on. What is the best part of your last run? Uh, the best part was definitely my body showcasing that it can do this. And yeah. it could probably do more. I'm just seriously like I'm I'm old. I'm th- I guess relative to anyone who's listening. But for <laughs> me, I feel like a lot of people feel like you can't start something new. You know, you right. can't 
you're you're too old. Life has passed you by. You should have done that as a kid. You know, I'm 37 and I'm closer to 40, but I feel like my body just did 300 pounds. I just ran yeah. 20 miles. You know, right. like, I feel like, wow, am I just now finding like how how yeah. amazing I can be? You know, yeah, definitely. And, yeah, and so I feel like. I wish someone told me this when I was younger, you know, like actually, yeah. you can do all these things, you know? And so I feel like that's just what always amazes me. Um, yeah. I, I'm the same way. Um, I'm closer to 40 as well. Actually I'll be 40 this year, but I'm, I would say fairly new to the ultra game as well. I've only been in it for three years, but I'm finding out these things about my body and myself that, I didn't think I would ever do. I didn't even think I could yeah. do it. And so now that, you know, I'm breaking these barriers and everything, these personal barriers, it's just like the next step. You just yeah. got to take it. You just got to keep going. You know, it's just a personal battle with yourself. Yep, for sure. Definitely. All right, Angel, is there anything that you want to revert to, uh, touch up on, kind of expand on before we move into the next section? No, I think I'm okay. <laughs> Okay, so the next section is going to be the five to stay alive. These are the okay. questions that I ask every guest about themselves and what keeps them going. Angel, are you ready for the five to stay alive? Yes. All right. Do you run with or without music? And if so, what is one power song that's on your running playlist that motivates you? Um, it depends on if I feel safe enough to use the music, okay. I don't know. Like if I'm running in the evening, I definitely don't do it. If I'm running on the road, I don't just cause I want to hear the cars coming at me, you know, like yeah. just yeah. little safety things. Safety um, first. yeah. Or if I'm doing a trail that like someone said there was like a snake on it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I'll err towards caution, okay. but I love music. I, I am definite, it depends on my mood for sure, because okay. I go from like listening to like dance electronic music yeah. to like reverting back to my punk rock days. So like I am, I'm all over the place. So lately I have just been kind of listening to like The Weeknd, just okay. because it's like, it's like a good beat, but it's like so chill, you know? Okay. So a so song, give, yeah, yeah, give us one song. So a song that I've been listening to lately that's just like super chill, but it keeps my cadence is yeah. Leave Me Before You Love Me by Marshmello okay. and Jonas Brothers. Yeah. All right. So keep in mind that this song is going to be added to the Spotify guest playlist for listeners to download. And this song is going to be a representation of you. Question number <laughs> two. What are some things in your life that have changed for the positive since you started running? Definitely just having that energy and that um be ready body for everything i do yeah i feel like i want to be an active mom like all the way to when i have grandkids and so running just sustains that and yeah. it also helps me crush like any adventures that i have planned heck yeah <laughs> question number three in your opinion, what is one thing that an athlete should avoid in their journey to becoming a better runner? I would say negative self-talk. Like yes. I that's that's my life story. Like that has always been me to like think you can't do this. You you know, you're not ready. You haven't trained. Like if we wait for perfect situations, it will never happen. Right. If you wait to go to the gym until you lose five pounds to look good in the gym to start in the gym. Like it's just like these little things where it's like, it won't start then, you know, yeah. we're never going to be ready nope. and you're never going to have all the resources, you know, never. Just, just start, you know, do it by yourself. And, yeah. you know, I think you're saying it best. And I mean, we got to break these self-imposed limitations that we have on ourselves. Definitely. A lot of the adventures that, so like you've noticed on my Instagram or anyone's ever commented on my Instagram, a lot of those are just me going and doing it. Yeah. Unprepared, uh, you know, and that's like how you learn. That's how you know how to do it best next. That's how you decide if you want to do it over, you know, and just right. like the 20 miler, never thought I would. 
Yeah. Just decided to go unprepared. And now I'm like, I think I can do more, you know? Yeah, definitely. Question number four, finish this statement. When it comes to long distance running, Angel cannot leave the house without her phone. Without your phone. <laughs> Well, I feel like I'm a journaler. <laughs> like I've always kept a journal as a kid. Yeah. And I feel like nowadays our journal is our phone because we take our pictures there. We do our posts there. And if you look at my Instagram, I feel like that's almost a journal to all the things I do. Like yeah. my progress, you know, I, po I post my PRs there, my fails there, my yes. running there. So I feel like a lot of times it's just my electronic journal and I can't leave without it. I totally understand. Do you write stuff down in a journal by any chance? I do. That's awesome. Give me one second. Okay. I am going to send you one of these. Ooh, nice. Yeah. So it has the Run Your Diaries logo on it and you'll be the first one to have that. Nice. Yeah. I need to definitely collect all my running in one step one space you know just yes yeah. especially with this new goal of the 50k coming up yeah yeah so i feel like i'm definitely going to be journaling the heck out of that one <laughs> <laughs> i i love it already number five do you have a running mantra um i have like it's also my hiking mantra okay and so when i get I'm a pretty positive person, so I usually don't need to like break out my mantra often, <laughs> only because like I'm I'm so excited about you know life and doing new things and seeing beautiful places, and that's what running does, you know, gives yeah. you all those things. But when I get to a point where I'm kind of self doubting, and that's when I need to start saying my mantra is that um, my people have done this in moccasins. You know, just to put yeah. it in perspective, it's like mm, your great, 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 great grandma didn't have ultra running shoes and right. a hydration vest and some what? earphones and a phone, you know, like yes. they didn't have that. They didn't have electrolytes. They didn't, you know, so I feel like that just, it builds me up. It gives yeah. me strength that's like, oh my gosh, I could, I'm going to take off my shoes and run this barefoot now, you know, Heck, like. Yes. <laughs> Heck Yes. <laughs> I get man, you know, the, I, I, I'm gonna think of that too when I run. You know, I mean, it's never crossed my mind, but now that you say it, like, yeah, it's totally true. Yeah, I feel like when I think of bare essentials, I that's my people. Like when we first yeah. started, that's everyone's. That's everyone's people. That do you really need all that to right. be the best you can be? No, and so I, I feel like that really, you know, grounds me. Yeah, and definitely. Then it just and it just reminds me I'm just as strong as them because that's my bloodline too, you yes. know. And it I makes me makes me strong. I love it. <laughs> hey, Angel, it took a while for you and I to finally find the right time to record this podcast. You, like many of our listeners, have a full schedule, including family, work, training, and in your case, all the adventures. So time management is definitely of great importance. Can you give the listeners a quick tip on how you find success in managing everything that you do? Yeah, so it's it's so difficult. I'm definitely not a master at it. Like every day, sometimes it goes haywire because something you didn't plan yeah. for happens or some school thing happens or your kid gets sick, you know? So it's just like, yeah. but I feel like, well, maybe two things that really help is to always go with the flow because you have no control over a lot of things. And if you have to skip a run for right. something that came up, like I can't think of like a harsher thing to think um, someone saying, now I can't do this because of you, you know, or like, you know, these are things we kind of like opt for. And so I feel like not placing any type of um too much stress on either your family or yourself yeah you know to to accomplish what you want to accomplish and then the other thing is 
early morning or super late at night are the times things get done, yeah. you know? So I have yep. to run early morning uh, before school, before work. And then super late at night is when ha all the planning happens, all the prep happens, you know? Yeah. And if you don't do that, then there's just no time. Yeah. You know, and I can see uh, your background. You have some uh, dry erase calendars and everything. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the same way. Like mine are all wa washed out by the uh, light right now, but mine are hanging up back here, and those are getting moved to this wall back here. But yeah, I need to start expanding yeah. because you know, with all the things that I have on my plate, time management is definitely one of the things that I need to get better at. Oh yeah, definitely. I have a, a calendar with like everything on it, but still, something gets missed every time. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, you need to. You can't control everything, but at least I have that like um, as a goal. And yeah. I feel like most, yeah. Of the, yeah. And then most of the time that does help me actually get in everything I almost need to get in, like, you know, everything kind of. Yeah. And, and you know, like you said, you know, we got to go with the flow. You know, I reached out to you maybe, man, maybe over the past three weeks, you know, making sure that our both of our schedules lined up correctly and everything. And if you needed any flexibility, I was flexible as well. So today was the day yeah. we finally got to get everything in line. But uh, Angel, I want to thank you for agreeing to be a guest on the show. Your notable appreciation and passion for the land exemplifies that it's more than just the ground beneath our feet. That's a beautiful and respectful quality that the world needs more of. Your adventurous and charismatic personality motivates those of us that need it, but inspires us all. Thank you for teaching us to connect and appreciate the landscape. And thank you for running on, caring for, and sharing stories of the land. I speak for us all when I say we appreciate what you're doing. Thank you so much. Good luck on your next uh, ultra. Thank you. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye. We're approaching the finish line. But before we cross, here's some news and views. That was Angel Taddington, founder of Adventurous Natives and one of Teva's Faces of the Canyon. Yes, I said Teva. I was corrected when we went off the air, never again will I say Teva. But when Angel was asked if she had a running mantra, she politely gave it to us and then gave us a lesson. Before we revisit her answer, let's take a second and think about the technology that enhances our own respective running performances. I web searched running essentials and the list that popped up included running shoes, of course, but also a GPS watch, heart rate monitor, texture, hydration carrier, and complex carbohydrate drinks. Here's Angel. Let's listen. Number five, do you have a running mantra? I'm a pretty positive person, so I usually don't need to like break out my mantra often, <laughs> only because like I'm, I'm so excited about, you know, life and doing new things and seeing beautiful places. And that's what running does, you know, gives yeah. you all those things. But when I get to a point where I'm kind of self-doubting and that's what I need to start saying my mantra is that um, my people have done this in moccasins. You know, just to put yeah. it in perspective, it's like mm, your great, 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 great grandma didn't have ultra running shoes and right. a hydration vest and some what? earphones and a phone, you know, like yes. they didn't have that. They didn't have electrolytes, they didn't, you know, so I feel like they're just it builds me up. It gives yeah. me strength that's like, oh my gosh, I could, I'm going to take off my shoes and run this barefoot now, you know? Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Heck yes. <laughs> yeah. I feel like when I think of bare essentials, I, that's my people. Like when we first yeah. started, that's everyone's, that's everyone's people. That, do you really need all that to right. be the best you can be? No. And so I, I feel like that really, you know, grounds me. Yeah, and definitely. It just, and it just reminds me, I'm just as strong as them because that's my bloodline too, you yes. know? And it I, makes, me, makes me strong. A big takeaway from Angel's response is having a positive mindset. Because through running, we're able to be in and experience beautiful places. And we need to just be in the moment without getting ahead of ourselves. This was an inspiring conversation that subtly encouraged us to add some grit to our run game expand our own respective journeys, and go beyond what's familiar. No matter where we're at in our running conquest, be the best that you can be in that instant of time and take your next footstep to the best of your ability. Thank you, Angel. Next, 
The black Run Shoe Diary shirts are in, same style and material as the original red. Check those out in the store. Link is in the description, along with the links to the Women Who Hike website and Teva's Must Watch Faces of the Canyon video featuring Angel Taddington. And with that, we have crossed the finish line. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or guest recommendations, contact me at runshoe.diaries at gmail.com. Again, that is runshoe.diaries at gmail.com. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Keyword search, Run Shoe Diaries. Thank you for listening to the Run Shoe Diaries podcast, episode 5, with Angel Taddyton. Until next time, remember that with each step comes the decision to take another. So keep putting one foot in front of the other because it's amazing what you can do on your own two feet. I'm out.